face is Sims, and we are back with more Chaos Child. And it's been a couple of, it's been like a day or two since I played, um, because I'm trying to do two things at once here. So anyway, um, I'm, right, we were going to the coffee shop, and I should have stopped like a couple of lines before this, but eh, eh, it is what it is. So anyway, right, we're meeting up with our friend. As usual, there was barely anyone there, just a single couple that appeared to be in college. I ordered my usual mountain view and sat down. What are you reading? Oh, Taku! I'm not sure what this is. Huh? I just grabbed it off the shelf. Saraka went and put the manga back on the shelf, then came and sat back down. <laughs> I don't know what it is! It looks like it's a boy's love. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Anyway. Here, this is your uniform. None told me to clean it, so I did. Thanks. I took the bag containing my uniform from Serica. It was the uniform that had gotten covered with blood at the Love Hotel. I really feel like you should get a new one. I, I just don't think blood's coming out. Oh, well, then again, women know how to get blood out of shit, so whatever. Did you go to school today? No, nope, neither did you, right? I nodded. I hadn't felt like it at all. Did you contact Nan and Ito? I sent them a text. Did we? I don't think we did. When I got up this morning, I sent both of them a text saying that I was okay. Okay, we did then. They both sent back responses almost immediately, but neither of them said much about what happened. They probably weren't mentioning it for my sake. So, how are you doing? You okay? Yeah, I guess. It wasn't my first time seeing a dead body. Sarika spoke in a normal tone of voice as she drank her favorite grapefruit juice. She didn't seem like she was lying. And that's how she'd been since she was a kid. It wasn't that she didn't have any feelings. She just got over them very quickly. She shoves them down deep and is like, <laughs> I'm fine! Everything's fine! <laughs> what about you, Taku? You okay? No. Now that she asked, I wasn't sure how to answer the question. The waitress brought me my mountain view. I nodded and took it. <laughs> she just looks like a pissed off... She Like, there's something about her mouth. She looks like a pissed off panda bear or something. She's got, like, like a pissed off bunny rabbit. I'm, she, maybe she's got cat ears going on there. I don't know, but she's... They made her face very, like, instead of just... She's, like, that. the mouth is like an animal mouth. She's like pissed off cat girl, I guess. Was I okay? Or was I okay? No way! Seriously? That's terrible! <laughs> Why is she laughing if it's terrible? Seriously, I couldn't believe it! What a dumbass, right? I spun the ice in my drink as I listened to the couple's irritating conversation. Serica silently waited for my answer. I knew that face. She'd been my friend since we were kids. There was no point in trying to hide it. To be honest, I'm not sure. Hmm, not sure about what? About whether I should keep following the case. Serica seemed genuinely shocked. Huh? Really? Excuse me! Like another thing of grapefruit juice. I kind of just like at the concern, her concern face. Okay, like, I know I make fun of them because they have, like, saucer-eyed derp faces. I mean, they're cute. Don't get me wrong. And it's like, it's the art style, but it is weird when the girls have eyes the size of their faces and the boys have, like, normal size eyes. But, like, but when you draw her like this, she is kind of fucking cute. Like, I can't lie. Like, you're like, look, she's like a sad puppy dog. I like her, like, concern face. Sorry. Sarika raised her hand and ordered another drink. Normally you'd say that this was your big chance and rush right in, right? That might be true, but... Things were different this time, after what I'd gone through. I mean, sure, what happened at the hotel was scary, but... Sarika continued as if she knew exactly what I was thinking. Remember how scary it was when we used to go chasing after urban legends? Remember how you snuck into that hospital because it was an adventure? I nodded. I just dreamed about it. 
That was scary too. But even when you were crying, you said that the terror was something special because nobody else had experienced it. Like, stop trying to egg us. I mean, we need, that's the whole point of this game, but also, what are you doing? Like, we're gonna die. You were crying back then too. Was I? I guess she's like, mm, I don't think so. Here, finish it all. Oh, thanks. Sarah took her glass of juice and gulped it down. Phew! So? Hmm? I mean, so? So what? Come on. Oh, right. So anyway, I figured you'd say that since you had an experience. I figured you'd say that since you had an experience that no one else had, and that even if it was scary, this was your big chance. Her voice was light as she drank her juice, but her words didn't feel light at all. Something other people hadn't experienced. Something different from other people. Sometimes, I don't know if she's smart or dumb. Sometimes you gotta be a little bit of both. Sometimes the smartest things come out of you when you are at your absolute, absolute fucking dumbest. I'm just saying. I stared at Serica's face. How much did she understand about what she was saying? What? Oh no, you can't have any. She moved the juice away from me. I was wrong. She probably didn't realize anything. Actually, she wasn't even thinking about anything. She really was dumb. <laughs> Fucking rude. I don't know about hearing that from a part-timer. Right? Does he just not give a damn? Well, normally, why would he? I'm curious as their conversation, because what's the point of popping over to their conversation unless it's pertinent somehow? You know what I mean? Hey, did I ever tell you about the comments from the Shibuya earthquake victims? <laughs> hmm? What do you mean? I was pretty sure I told her a bunch of times. Well, whatever. Time for a lecture. <laughs> we're such a douche. We're like the biggest douche. It's a good thing we're attractive. Because we are an asshole. Remember how just after the chaos from the earthquake calmed down, a ton of reporters started asking the victims for comments before the term chaos child syndrome existed? Of course, I'd been in a coma for about a year after the earthquake so I'd only investigated it after I woke up. Most of the interviews were about what good citizens were. About what good citizens were. We were. Oh, we were. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, huh? After that huge disaster, there was barely any violence or looting. And they said this was amazing. And I think they were right. When they asked the victims what was the hardest part, most people were more concerned about others than themselves. They talked about how they couldn't contact their families and tell them they were safe, or how they couldn't give their children their favorite foods. But then one person said something different. It's really weird, because like, oh, we were, there was no looting or violence. Really? Because I'm pretty sure when we were dragging Serica to the hospital, we watched two dudes drag an unconscious girl to a back alley and some other dude go after them, and there were people throwing things. I don't know, we witnessed a lot of bad shit. I guess it was the, that was the kind of, during the aftermath, like the, the earthquake just kind of happened, so now we lose our mind and do horrible things like, rape people but then afterward we're cool I don't, let's not negate that thanks that was inappropriately gross i mean i not for the game putting it in there because like it's kind of like the gross shit happens after an earthquake people are losing their motherfucking minds including that what the fuck makes you think that that's okay first of all what makes you think that's okay like ever but also especially after an earthquake well we almost died might as well assault this chick. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, the fuck? That's when you get a big backhand across the face. So I feel like it's kind of like, you know, the game being like, people are doing crazy, disgusting shit. But now we're like, we were all so wonderful. Are we sure about that? Because I think we just saw some gross shit happen earlier, but eh. Anyway, one person said something different. I remembered what they said word for word. It left a huge impression on me. You outsiders have some nerve if you're telling us to hang in there. To be honest, I agreed completely. They said exactly what I was thinking. I didn't know who they were, but I admired them anyway. 
Those feelings were the exact opposite of all the excited, fired-up people on the outside. I think whoever said that said that was someone close to me. Not just someone who not just someone who just saw the whole thing on the internet. Not someone who just happened to be caught up in the earthquake. You mean one of your parents? But then where are they? Aren't they dead? Oh hey! The guys from the tennis club say they're closing they're coming to the drinking party after the festival. Seriously? Oh, then we definitely won't be able to drink at home. And I was different. I was different than the people who just lived normal lives in Shibuya. I'm special! I'm not like other girls! <sighs> I ripped the bandage off my cheek. The wound had closed up. My face was back to normal. I was back to normal. The case was right in front of me. I had a huge mystery to investigate. I mean, no. I wasn't about to just be caught up in something. As a writer, my job to ju jump right into the middle of the, all this information, right? I could feel something like excitement with this duty, duty welling up inside me. And I feel like this wouldn't work if we were, like, not an asshole. Because we're like, I'm totally on the right side of everything. Everything I do is amazing. I am, like, just, like, not like other humans. I'm special. I'm the special. And we're kind of an asshole about it. So we, like, jump gung-ho into stupid shit. We're like, if we were like, yeah, you know, I mean, I, after what happened at the Love Hotel, I think I just want to curl up in a ball and pretend that nothing ever happened. What? Ooh, what are you talking about? What case? woo hoo What? Mysteries? <laughs> Don't know her. You know what I mean? <laughs> She'd be, like, traumatized. And he's like, nah, fuck that shit. I was made for this. I'm special. So, slightly deluded and insane. Eh. Hey, we're a good character. I'm enjoying this. But we're kind of an asshole at the same time, so... Makes it fun, though. You know what I mean? Like, most of the time you play characters who are, like, wonderful, wholesome beings. And you're like, no, not this time. We are kind of a douche. And if we die, it might be like, we kind of deserved it. We're an ass. But I still love him a little bit. <laughs> like, I love you, you big fucking asshole. Anyway, I couldn't stop myself from smiling. Sometimes. And then he opens his mouth and I'm like, and I changed my mind, but. Not to say that I'm not enjoying the game. I enjoy him as a character while we're playing the game, but, like, kind of insufferable, like, a little bit. We're borderline insufferable at times. You might be put in danger again. Huh? You mean the case? I nodded. Serica laughed a little strangely. And then for some reason she patted me lightly on the shoulder. I didn't know what that meant, but I started to laugh, too. She's fucking cute when she winks, too. Sarika nodded. Hey, all right, let's start with the Love Hotel case, then. Sarika took out a Pokecom. I think it's like a Pokedex. Like, it's like a... I just... I can't think of anything other than Pokemon. And I'm like, yeah, what? It's no time for games? Oh, right, this is your, uh... It's supposed to... <laughs> you just... You didn't think that one through, did you, game? She typed into it with a practiced hand. She seemed to be loading a video file. What's this? This? This is the video you took at the scene. I uploaded it to an online storage site before the police deleted it. Good girl! You you know what? That wink is well-deserved for you. Yeah. By the time I got back home, the sun had long since set and it was past 8 p.m. I realized that I'd barely eaten anything since arriving at the Love Hotel. I suddenly felt very hungry. So I'd eaten a meal at LAX, or LAX. I don't know what we're supposed to call it. LAX is like Los Angeles air Airport. <laughs> but like, is it LAX? Is it LAX? What do you, I need you to, I don't know. When you capitalize it like that, I want to say LAX. But anyway, anything since arriving at the Love Hotel. That was several days ago. Hey, I've been wondering since the last time I came here, did you change your hot water pot? It used to be more... Oh, you made this into a closet? Sarah had followed me home. She started to glance around the room and offer her opinions on the way it was laid out. Oh god, don't touch that overhead cabinet! See, all my not porn, but really weird pickup girl magazines from 2004. She'd open drawers and be surprised even though there was nothing important inside. I'd look at new files about the case and tell me their contents at a glance. She always was a little strange like that. She'd be surprised by the most obvious things, but sometimes she would show startling insight. And wait. You're really ex- Oh, it's me. You're really excited about something, aren't you? 
<laughs> she laughed another strange laugh. Is it that much fun to try and solve this case? Hmm, it's more like it feels wrong to give up on something you want to do until you've really given it your all. No matter how it ends up, it's the only way anything matters. You're gonna die someday, but you aren't dead right now. <laughs> she's like sugar-coated crazy, I kind of like her. Like, she's like, you shouldn't give up on solving mysteries just because we almost died. I mean, sure, we were almost like stabbed in the face, but like, we ain't dead yet, bitches! She like, she sugar-coated crazy, and I like it. I see, I thought. She was right. A sound came from my PC. The copy operation was finished. Okay, now delete the original in the online storage. Huh? Why? Just because of what it is. I don't want anybody seeing it. This is my private storage, so it should be okay. Even so, I want there to be no chance that someone else can access it. Actually, delete the one on your Pokecom, too. Okay... Taku, what are you doing? Oh, shit. I kind of forget where we were, positive or negative. I think the last thing we did was negative. Um, she looked over at me while she was rifling through my bookcases. I think we'll go positive this time. Oh, I can just use my arrow buttons instead of my Joy-Coms. Maybe that's what turning it on and off was. Is like, if I turned it off, I wouldn't be able to do this. You know what I mean? I wonder. Can we go to options and turn it off and see what happens? Config. Oh, basic. Okay. Oh, no. We can't choose now. That's actually what it is. It turns off the ability to choose. Weird. Why would they even have that option? Why would you even have the ability to turn it off? And why would it automatically be off? You know what I mean? Wait, what was the other one? A text message skip. We turned that off to skip. I don't know why there isn't like a... We haven't gotten text messages, so... You know what I mean? I turned that off and you literally can't choose. So that seems silly. Because like... What's the point? Then you play the game and you're not using the positive, the delusion kind of thing, which changes the path. I mean, I guess maybe there's one if you never do any of them. Um, and we could have gone through and done that, but it's kind of fun to do these. So it's weird that the default is off. Like, I, and maybe somebody explained in the comments um, up to this point, but obviously, like, none of this is posted yet at this point. So by the time any of you mention it, it's don't... Don't be mad at me that I'm like, well, I don't understand. And you're like, I explained it six parts ago. I think we're only, I don't even think we're at part six. I don't even know where we are. You know what I mean? It's just, you haven't seen any of these yet. So <laughs> this might be part six or seven, but like, you haven't seen any of these yet. So anyway, but if you know, like, what's the point of it not being on aside from if you don't choose the delusion that there, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that if you never choose positive or negative, there's an ending. I'm assuming there's one if it, everything was negative. I'm assuming there's one if everything's positive or a majority. And then I'm assuming there's other ones depending on maybe if we do positive with Serica all the time or we always do negative with her. You know what I mean? Because there's five or six endings. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm guessing. So I'm just guessing maybe if you don't choose it. But it's kind of like if you didn't, you're missing out on so much of the game you know anyway we're gonna go with positive with her so anyway she looked over at me while she rifled through my bookcases uh making kakonto 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 yeah oh kakonto huh what kind of food is that are you serious it's a herbal drink can gave it to me keeps you from vomiting wow i you know about something like that? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> get smart. And then some information I'd found before flashed across my mind. Of course, it was from Cool Cat Press. <laughs> her positive delusion is like hitting on her. That's fucking hilarious. It's like, yeah, she thinks it's impressive. I know how to make herbal drinks, so I'm just gonna be like, 
Yo, baby, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Or what the fuck is it? Oh, do you mind if I'm a little selfish here? Can I fall in love with you? <laughs> uh, anyway, I'd read about it in a certain special they'd run. If you put eye drops into a beer, it'll make a girl feel aroused. I'm pretty sure that just makes you, like, sick. I, that is also bad information. That is, like, borderline roofying her. Like, oh, yeah, you're, you're doing it to roofie her. That's your point. But I'm also pretty sure that isn't, don't eye drops, isn't it? It's been in so many, it's been in CSI. It's been in, like, so many different, like, cop shows. But don't eye drops actually make you, like, sick if you put them in your drink? If you drink eye drops? I mean, like, sure, if you, like, accidentally got a little bit of an eye drop in your mouth, you're not going to gag. But, like, a couple of eye drops, don't they, like... You know what I mean? Like, isn't it not good for you? Like, it's not like, oh, yeah, I feel sexy. It's more like, I think I need to shit myself. Something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to go the way you think it is. At the time, I hadn't believed it. I don't think you should believe it. In another issue, they said that eye drops in cola would make a girl go to sleep. Yeah, see? <laughs> There's... And then another one, they said it might kill you. Yeah. Adding eye drops into a drink would create unusual side effects. Yes. I heard a rumor that it was just an urban legend, though. But what would happen if you put eye drops into Kakonto? There was a stupid teenage girl who didn't even know what Kakonto was right in front of me. Okay, wow. This is not a positive delusion. This is so wrong. Should I try it? Fuck no! <laughs> I prepared two cups like it was the most natural thing in the world and poured out the Kakonto I'd made. Then, taking special care that Sarika wouldn't see me, I added a few drops of eye drop medicine from my shelf into her drink. She's gonna die. Like, she is literally like, she's like, oh, hey, I feel sexy, and then she's gonna shit all over you. I don't know what really actually happens, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't make you feel sexy, is all I'm saying. Here. I gave her the cup, acting very naturally. Thanks. She took a drink without suspecting a thing. I gulped as I watched her. What? What's wrong? Oh, no. This is terrible! Tastes like medicine! It's Chinese herbal medicine, after all. With added eye drops, to be precise. I decided to watch and see what happened. I hope she vomits all over you. Wait. I kind of feel... Hmm? Isn't it hot in here? Sarika's cheeks seemed a little pink, and she seemed to be kind of spacing out. Was it starting to work already? I didn't expect it to work so fast. <laughs> uh, hey, Taku? I feel really, really weird. Her breathing was getting shallower. She was fidgeting and rubbing her thighs together. Okay, <laughs> that's not how this works, game. You perverted weird fox, that's not what would happen. She was clearly behaving differently than she usually did. Way to go, Cool Cat Press. No, don't ever do this! Oh, what did I just say before? You know, we're like an asshole, but I don't hate him. I kind of hate you right now, Taku. I kind of fucking hate you right now. I'm gonna go use your bathroom. The bathroom? What are you gonna do? It's a secret. She's gonna literally shit her brains out. <laughs> Secret. Are you feeling okay? I hope she pukes on us. I really do. Hey, tell me what you're gonna do in the bathroom. S something naughty. Huh? Don't make me say it, dummy. I, I see. I gulped. You can use the bathroom if you want, but don't be in there too long, okay? I think it's funny. I need to use your bathroom. What are you gonna do in there? What do you normally do in a bathroom? Something naughty. He's like, oh, you're gonna like... She's like, I'm going to literally shit myself. Huh? I don't want to go to the bathroom. Huh? Serica was looking at me surprised. <laughs> we were in our deluded head. Our deluded fantasy. We said it out loud. Her cheeks weren't flushed and her expression was normal. Where did that come from? Oh, no, never mind. I... I thought you said you needed to go to the bathroom. I desperately tried to recover as I drank my own cacanto. I hadn't found any eye drops on the shelf, so I'd given up on the experiment. Sarah complained about the taste, but swallowed it down anyway. 
Ken's such a nice guy, though. I like him. I wish he wouldn't get drunk so often, though. But he's your only real friend here at the park, right? So he really is a good guy. He's the only person that likes you, so he's got to be a saint. Because you're kind of a douche. Thinking of spike in a girl's drink. Really would have been funnier if she vomited all over him. Why was that? Oh, was that why? Well, it did help me out a lot. I read that wrong. Okay, it's deleted. Sarah could put away her Pokecom. All right. I booted up the laptop next to the wall and sat down in the chair that folded out into a bed. As I went to load the video file into the player software, I happened to glance at its length. 26 minutes? Were we in that room that long? Oh, Sarika said. I don't think so. Right after you passed out, the police arrived. But I was sick and throwing up. At some point, I grabbed your phone and put it in my pocket. And then when I was in the police car, I realized I had it. That was when I turned off the record button. So that was it. Come to think of it, I hadn't asked how it had happened. I'm amazed you had time to upload it to the storage before the police deleted it. Sarika nodded as if she felt the same way. It was blind luck. When we got to the station, I got sick again, so I ran to the bathroom, and that's when I got the idea. I just really... Sorry. I don't know what it is. It doesn't look like it fits the game. I love her, like, perplexed face. They're just adorable. No, I'm really amazed. I really was. I'd passed out in the hotel, and the next thing I knew, I was at the station. Supposedly, I'd walked, in, walked from the patrol car to my room, but my memory was vague and hazy. I took a big sip from the cup to choke down the urge to vomit and slowly let it sink into my stomach. If the recording was successful, then I should see what I'd seen then. It had happened two days ago, but it left such a strong impression on me that it didn't feel like that much time had paused at all. Passed at all. I said paused. Passed. Wow. I'm sure that's what it said. Not paused. I took a deep breath and told myself it was time to do this. Yeah. I looked over at Serica. Okay. She nodded back at me and glared at the monitor. Okay. I tried to steady my slightly shaking finger as I clicked the file. The first thing I noticed was that sound. The peaceful sound of the music box that filled the room from that spinning bed. A dark, gloomy room. A curtain in the back and a rotating bed behind it. I mean, that's kind of fun. I love Hotel with a rotating bed. Woohoo! <laughs> it was that room. The same emotions I'd experienced before came flooding back to me through the blurry screen. I could sense my own hesitation from my gasping breaths. Sarika grabbed my shoulder at the sudden sound. It's okay. I think that's just where I made the floor creak. Oh, yeah, I see. The camera was slowly moving toward the back of the room. At some point, my breathing matched the breathing of the recording. It scared me, so I pulled away a little and took a deep breath to isolate myself from the person in the video. I heard that sound. The sound of the wire creaking as the bed spun. I could feel the panic coming through the screen. I wasn't sure what to do. I'm gonna keep going. I could tell that Serica was gulping a little. As I spoke, the camera kept going forward. I could hear Serica soft gasp in the video. The police officer and that woman were lying on the floor. I didn't realize it at the time, but the glass was, sh was scattered all around. Damn. The camera quickly panned without warning. Pan, a video recording term, refers to fixing the camera in a single location while changing the direction it faces. It was that bed. The silhouette behind the curtain was probably that man. The angle was off and wasn't pointing directly at the bed. At that point, I hadn't really been aware of the smartphone. Let's get out of here, now! I heard a dull thud and the screen went black. Huh? Did, did you drop it? Probably. I felt like I'd tripped and fallen backwards. The phone had probably fallen from my hands. Was it black because the camera had fallen face down? Taku, the door won't open! 
Zerika's voice sounded like it was a little far away. It was still picking up sound, evidently. I could hear myself trying to open the door and swearing when I failed. That's right. I've been fighting with the door then. And then... Here's the thing. The cops were like, you need to delete that video. She should have been like, don't you want to watch it? Because then they got no one was there. Do you not hear the knocking? Of course, the phone was face down. So they'd be like, oh, you were just knocking on a wall. They wouldn't believe you, but, you know. My body shivered as if it had gone numb. It doesn't help that every once in a while in my refrigerator, or like the people working in the apartment next door, are like making knocking noises. And you're like, stop it while we're playing a spooky game about knocking. This was... I could hear it. And this is where someone knocks on my door in my apartment. Stop it. Hey, you heard it, right? Y yeah. I could hear it. The police said the surveillance cameras hadn't shown anyone else coming into the room, but I could hear it. The constant rhythmic knocking. I know it's actually really creepy. Like the rest of the game, like there's spookiness, but like something about that knock, knock, knock. You're like, ah, it's kind of creepy. Somehow it made me feel uneasy and scared. Kind of makes me feel that way too. Someone had been on the other side of that door and suddenly the screen moved. What? Taku, we need to get out of here! It was showing the man on the bed. The screen was blurry, but the man was almost exactly in the center of the viewfinder. And I picked up the smartphone? I couldn't remember. Taku! In the video, I ignored Sarika's voice and kept pointing the camera at the man. Shock. I could hear my own rough breathing, and I remembered how I'd felt then. Then suddenly I heard a snap. Ugh, that's when his head snapped. We didn't really need to relive this. The screen moved violently for a second, and then for a moment it showed the girl. Then the angle changed again, and it stopped moving. The screen was covered in red blood, but... Is that the ceiling? What I was looking at was probably the room's ceiling. Since it didn't move at all, this was probably where I'd passed out and dropped it. Your phone is covered in blood. You want that back? I also don't want my uniform back, thanks. It's that dude's blood. Just like before, the camera was still recording the sound. I could hear Serica vomiting and what sounded like someone falling over. What? Hey, what happened here? Caught the police officers running into the room. They were asking Serica what was going on. She was probably the only one there who was still conscious. <laughs> Shortly after the screen went black, Sarah had probably put the phone in her pocket, just like she'd said. I could hear an irritating noise that must have been the sound of the phone scraping the skirt's fabric. The screen stayed black, but it kept picking up the nearby sound. And at the very end, there was a quick shot of the inside of a patrol car. I realized that at some point I'd leaned my body toward the screen, just sat back in my chair. I'd known what was going to happen, but this was still hard. To be honest, I was lucky that the phone was dropped and a lot of it wasn't clearly recorded. I didn't feel as much of an urge to vomit as I'd expected, and I was still sweating from a nasty, unpleasant feeling. I gulped down the last bit of liquid in my cup. Oh no, wait, are you okay? I asked Sarika. And then... Hey, Taku? Did you see something weird at the end of the video? W what? Weird? The whole thing was weird. Not a second of it was normal. Once we went further into the room, Sarah could move the mouse to jump backwards in the video. Couldn't tell whether she was tough or simply dense, or maybe just felt like it was nothing but a video. But she advanced through the shocking scenes with no hesitation. Well, here's the thing sometimes after a trauma like that, you're like, this is real. I'm just going to pretend it's a movie. It's easier to pretend it's a movie and it was fake and not real and something that I witnessed because that's terrifying. You know what I mean? So sometimes when you watch real things happening that are just awful, you're like, not real. I know it's real, but it's easy to kind of disconnect and go, it's a movie, because otherwise it's traumatic. You know what I mean? Like, think of anything you've seen where you've seen something real, in real life happening, it's harder to do. But when you're watching, like, news footage, if they were like, hey, look at this horrible thing that's happening, like, you know, you're like... Uh, I can just, you can just pretend it's a movie because it's on TV. You're not really there. You can disconnect. Even though 
for Taku, he's like, I was there. This is what we experienced. Serika right now is like, it's just a, it's just a thing, a TV show, you know? Anyway. Oh my God. Here, look, outside the window. Is that a dude's face in the corner? What is in the bottom left corner of the, like the window? It looks like a head. Is it that wrestler dude? Hmm? Yeah. I can see the wall of the Love Hotel across the street from the open window. There was something there. It says it's a face. It looks like a face. What is this? A... A bug, maybe? If there was a bug that big in it, Caruso would have blown up the whole building. She hated bugs. And maybe some graffiti? Why was her first answer a bug and her second answer the sensible one? No, wait. I've seen this before. I assume it's that sumo wrestler, the wrestler photo or whatever, right? I switched from my player software to my editing software and then blew it up. Blew up that part of the screen. Damn it. I could make it out, but it was so far away that it was blurry. The resolution was too low. See? It is a bug! It's spreading its wings! It is not. I've seen this somewhere before. It's a fucking face! Yeah! What? I turned around at the loud noise. Is that Gen? Ageman. I have returned! Sorry to keep you waiting! There was a drunk man with a bottle of booze in his hand. Give me a break. Of course no one was waiting. Make less noise when you come in. Hey, Gen! Thanks for your help! My help? You told me about the thing at the Love Hotel, remember? Oh! Oh! Did I? Well, it doesn't matter. Something happened? Great! Taku wants to be a reporter after all. I didn't really. Every day I supposedly wanted to be a different thing. Last time it was a movie director. I've returned! Hey, listen, Taku! Look what I've acquired so that I may remain me! Hmm? Where is it? He started patting down the pockets of his very old coat. Oh, where is it? Help if I knew the contacts when I was reading his lines, but this annoying old man was Gen. He was the elder ruler of this park and the CEO of the company with three billion yen a year salary and the best friend of my father, Jiro. At least according to him. My dad's name wasn't even Jiro. He was related to a clan of foreign nobles, and so if he ever needed, he could summon a foreign special forces team to do his bidding. Except last week his bed had been taken over by a stray dog and he'd had to come stay with me. It's gone! Hmm. My most important thing is gone! C crap! How am I supposed to piss? <laughs> Serica's eyes! Hey, Gen! Don't take off your pants! Gen was always loud when he got drunk. And when he got really drunk, he was louder. Today he wasn't very drunk. I had no idea what he was like when he was sober i never seen it happen or heard of it happening. Sometimes, or often actually, at least once a week, he would come by my room drunk, talk for a while, and then leave to search the park for more alcohol. I found it! I found it, Missy! Look! Look at this! I'm not gonna look! Absolutely not! Especially because he said he's gotta take out his thing because he can't... <laughs> he was obnoxious as hell, to put it mildly, but I couldn't chase him away. Actually, I couldn't complain about it much at all. When I left the dorm half a year ago, I ended up in the bottom half of uh, Miyashita Park. Since the upper half kept the rain off, the bottom half was one of the most popular spots. A lot of the reason I was able to get this spot and even get this motor home was because, again... You're awful! That's disgusting! When I lived in the dorm, I'd done some cooking for the homeless at Miyashita Park as part of our volunteer activities. Again, I'd remembered that. A nobleman does not forget his debts, was all he said, and then somehow I'd been given this place. He was also the one who taught me how to get by in this place. Oh, right, Taku. Look at this. Want to buy it? Ken took something out of his pocket. I ripped the copy of my favorite magazine out of his hands. I quickly glanced, glanced over to Serica. I hate you! I hate 
hate you, Gin! She was mumbling that over and over to herself. Thought she liked him. Good, she didn't see it. I breathed a sigh of relief and hid it someplace nearby. How much? Hmm. Gin raised a single finger. This was one rule, for example. It was the first thing I learned in the park. The homeless would never, ever ask you for money. It was the one thing they could never say. Money was either fine lying on the ground or earned by working or selling things. It, was something, it wasn't something other people gave you. I took out a hundred yen coin from my wallet and gave it to him. Again, grabbed it and put it in his pocket like he didn't really care. Do we have a job? How do we make money? To do anything. To, like, pay for anything. <gasps> hey, I see that a lot lately! He was looking at the PC monitor as he spoke. For a moment, I didn't know what he meant. Huh? Uh... My eyes met Sarah's for just a moment. The monitor was still displaying that blurry, blown-up image. He saw it a lot? Hey, Gen! You know what this is! I wanna play some baseball! He was in his own little world. What was this guy's problem? I got closer to him. He's fucking drunk. Ken, have you seen this before? Huh? I mean, it's everywhere you look! Like in front of the station? Wait, what's a station again? Huh? You mean the train station, right? Shibuya station? You know? Um, hmm. Wait, Taku. It was in the last thing you showed me, right? Huh? You know, a few years ago, when you did a stakeout at a karaoke box and were the first person to get something or other. It was last weekend, actually. When I had been uploading the photos of the crime scene I took from the karaoke box, Ken had come by and seen them. This was it. Oh, Taku, look! It was an image of the karaoke box I'd hidden in to take pictures of the crime scene. It was on the fifth floor. I could see the same mark. I switched from the player software to the editor software just like before and magnified that part of the image. Shh, creepy face. And then I realized what it was. That's right. I had seen this thing before. That ex You know, because they were talking about it so you knew it would be pertinent. And just like Gen said, it was something you could find all over Shibuya. How the fuck did it get up there, though? Something that had been there for a long time. This is a sumo wrestler sticker. It's got like two faces. It's weird. It's like... A sumo wrestler sticker! Next scene. <laughs> so weird. As I saw the club room for the first time in three days, I was stunned. Man, I did my best. I have been waiting all morning to tell Ito the big discovery I'd made yesterday. I'd stayed up almost all night finding all the information I could on it, and forced myself to wait until school ended to tell him. I figured that just sending pictures to his phone or trying to explain it in words would just confuse him. Because, you know, all of our friends are idiots. I wanted to stand in front of the board in the club room with all the information we'd learned so far pinned up on it, and use the club time to really work through it. But... There was nothing there at all. I can only think of one person who would do that. Kurusu. When we left yesterday, she said it was too dangerous, and that she wasn't going to let you do it. Was it because of what happened at the Love Hotel? In, an, in as angry a voice I could muster, I said, Why didn't you stop her? I told you I tried. She told me to shut up, though, and I did. You should have done something. You don't tell me to do the impossible. Could you have done something? Don't tell me to do the impossible. Ito shrugged as if to say, See? Just imagining it scared me a little. Doing something about Karusu was absolutely impossible. No one in Hekio was capable of such a thing. Punch her out a window. It's fine. I pointed to the PC on the desk. And what about the data? You just consider yourself lucky that you didn't physically destroy the whole hard disk. So the data was gone too. Ida was probably joking, but if Kurusu thought she needed to do it, she would have. 
Oh no, wait. What are you printing out? Here you go. Sarika dropped a stack of papers on the desk. If she just printed out all the data, she's best girl. I'm sorry, no, nerd girl over there that keeps her mouth shut and just mumbles is best girl. But like, Sarika is a good girl. And Kurusu needs to be shoved out a window. She's kind of irritating. Like, I know she's like supposed to be like big sister, but she's kind of mom in us. And it's like, you're throwing off my groove. But I mean, I guess we got to have somebody on the team who's kind of an asshole and annoying. I mean, we're an asshole. But we're trying to push this forward and she's trying to cock block us the whole way. So like, but like, I still want to push her out a window. She's kind of irritating. <laughs> I appreciate her character for what it is, but she's going to get like worst girls all I'm saying. I looked down and saw that it was the images and articles about the case. It was the ones that were uploaded to the newspaper club server. Where did you get these? always telling me that a true right sider needs to make sure his stuff is backed up? I mean, you got backups too, right? Well, yes, but I got backs, backups of my backups, bitch. Sarika flipped through the papers. Hmm. For some reason, the image quality drops if I print it off my Pokecom. I'll re-upload it to the server. W wait a second. Sarika went to stretch a cable from her Pokecom to the PC, but I quickly stopped her. Hmm? Is this image quality good enough? That's not it. I mean, the image quality's fine, but I'd rather you didn't upload it to the server for a while. I glanced at Ito as I spoke. The newspaper club server could be accessed from any PC in the school as long as you knew the password. Kurusu was spending her time at the student council getting ready for the culture festival, and there was a chance she might look at the server for some reason. Ito nodded in agreement, a serious look on his face. You two are too afraid of Nan. She's nice, right, Hana? Hmm. I really wish that she would talk! <laughs> I love her. See? See what? Was Kazuki agreeing? She was pounding down on the keyboard and mouse really hard. That's because she likes you two. That's right. We visited every crepe stall in Shibuya together. Nan knows all about sweets. Be more like known. Known. Because it's no no. Because it's no. No, no. But I can't call her no one. No one? Sounds weird, so non it is. Anyway. Sarika puffed out her chest, very proud of this information. I didn't care in the slightest. I didn't care in the slightest. I care a lot that they didn't take me for crepes. Anyway. In either way, I think non's gonna find out. And that was probably true, yeah. If we kept following the case as part of our work with the newspaper club, Caruso was smart enough to catch on. It's okay. She'll understand once you talk to her. I simulated a variety of situations in my mind. Positive, negative? Hell yeah! Hell yeah, we going negative this time, bitch. I want to see what the negative is. Kurusu loved sweets. This was something that Sarika had said and that I'd known about, too. So would buying her something she liked from a famous sweet shop be enough to win her over? Would bribery work on someone as prim and proper as a student council president? It was worth a try. <laughs> I like just being able to do this. Unless we could win her over, we weren't going to be able to continue with the case. Okay, let's go buy something to bribe her with. Ito, find me the top three most famous sweets places in Shibuya. Leave it to me. The vice president's heart is yours. It was time for the mission to begin. So here you go. This is a present for you, Kurusu. I knew that Kurusu was staying late after school to get ready for the festival. I handed her the present I just bought. The happy music. Like, -na 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 -na, we bought her some sweets and she's gonna stab us. Ito had found me a pancake place near Shibuya Station. It was a popular store where there was always a line of girls outside. I heard it was one of the few places where you could get pancakes for takeout, so I quickly chose it. Standing in line with the girls for an hour was almost torture, but I somehow managed to do it. I love that. It's torture standing in line with a bunch of girls! Meanwhile, I'm reading a magazine trying to pick up chicks. Is this pancake from Eggs and Thanks? Yeah, why? What are you planning? Y you don't need to say that after I was nice enough to go buy you something. You've never brought me a present before. 
You're after something, aren't you? Ito, what's going on here? I guess we're bribing you so you'll let us keep working on the case? Y you asshole! You could have put up more of a fight than that! I'm sorry, Miyashiro. I just can't fight the power of her stare. Huh! I'm glad you got me something, but I can't accept this. Kurusu handed the pancakes back to me. She was always so serious about this stuff. You two enjoy them. They're very good. Her face was smiling, but her eyes weren't. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I literally thought she was going to, like, karate chop us over the fucking balcony. Yeah, that's what would happen. Kurusu would see through my any attempt at bribery I made. I mean, I guess when it's, like, negative, it should be like, we're going to bribe her. That's going to go bad. Or... We're gonna bribe her. Maybe we should do something else. I don't know. It was a bad idea to try and buy her off. Why would I want to split a pancake dinner with Ito anyway? Or would it work better if Ito didn't go with me? Okay, I've got it. Huh? You're sure? Ito must have been really surprised by my answer because he badly overreacted. I didn't think you were so brave. I'm always brave when it counts. Just don't put anything on the server yet. I want to be cautious. Okay. And for now, we'll put the information on the board, but when it's done, we'll take it off. Things are going to get tricky. Okay. And for now, let's not tell Kurusu about the case. We can keep an eye on things until they calm down, and then bring it up when she's in a good mood after eating something sweet. Okay. Aren't you just being a pussy? Wh what? I'm not being a pussy. I'm choosing the method most likely to succeed. If you call that being a pussy, then the definition of pussy... Right, right, I get it. When I am, oh no, I am going to put up that map. Hold that end. Okay. Ito and Sarika took out the big map we used for the board. Oh my god, we're like, so then, the definition, okay, whatever, anyway. <laughs> he just walked away from us. And this is the best way to persuade her. He didn't get it at all. There was no way I could persuade Kurusu if I tried to go after her head on. Wait, Miyashiro, let me be serious for a second here. He had a very serious tone in his voice as he hung up the top of the map. Huh? I've been serious the whole time. Is it okay to keep following the case? I told you. I'll persuade her eventually. I'm not being a pussy. I'm just being cautious. That's not what I'm talking about. You saw something really bad, right? In, in the Love Hotel? Sarah froze midway through the process of taping down the bottom of the map. So that was it. I hadn't told Ito anything about the Love Hotel. I hadn't told him about what I'd seen or experienced there. He just knows. It's a bromance. It's guy love! Anyway, I tried my best to give him a cheerful smile. It's fine, no problem. This was way too big of a scoop not to chase, right? Ito didn't answer. His stare at... He stared at me as if trying to figure me out. And then he relaxed and laughed a little. Well, I figured as much when we talked on the phone. He was probably talking about the call I'd made yesterday. After I made my discovery, I called Ito and asked him to find all the information he could about the Love Hotel case. It had already been three days since it had happened. I hadn't been... I hadn't been really following it at all, so I'd asked Ito to put together what he could find. Okay, all set! Sarika finished pinning the map to the board. Hey, look, it's really there. Okay, let's get started. It was a brand new map of Shibuya. We had to put it up from scratch again, but now that I looked at it, maybe that wasn't such a bad thing. I made a huge discovery which could impact the whole case. It was a good idea to start over from the beginning. First, we'll assume that there's a connection between the dates when these incidents are happening and the incidents six years ago. In other words, we'll consider all three cases so far as part of a set. This is regardless of whether someone's behind all this or what they might be after. Yeah, that makes sense now that there have been three incidents. If we find out we're wrong, we can reconsider things then. Why do we have ten things up there? Weren't there only six cases? Anyway. Alright, let's start with the locations. Um, the first case, Don't Look at Me, took place in Jinan. So here's the picture of the body.
Oh, that's this one. Oh, cool. We actually have to... Oh, shit, I'm supposed to remember this shit? Yeah. And here's the summary of the case. Oh, cool, so we can actually read that again. So that was what was happening last time. By the way, the incident that occurred six years ago on the same date was... Um, the group dive. Oh, fuck, I don't remember which one's which. That's the crucified dude. Oh, shit, I'm supposed to know. That's the crucified dude. That's the thing. I don't remember what... Oh, it's probably this one, because this looks like a bunch of people. That's the thing hotel. This literally looks like a bunch of... Group dive. A bunch of people took a swan dive off a roof. I'm going to choose this and see what happens. And here's the summary of the case. Approximately 11.30 passers by... Oh, no, let me read it! And that's it for the first case. Well, let's move on to the second. Leaky noise happening in Shinsen, so... We're not going to be able to get through this. We probably need a guide for this, because I'm not going to get them all. Here's a picture of the body. That one I remember. That one I remember. And here's the summary of the case. By the way, the incident that occurred six years ago on the same date was, um, the pregnant man. Oh, okay, that's that. Okay, I remember that one, kind of. That's this one. Okay. I hope I'm doing this right. I think they're right. And here's the summary of the case. Okay. Okay, finally, the one that took place in the Love Hotel. That happened in the Love Hotel area in Dogenzaka, so... Why is it not clicking? So, about the summary. I looked at Ito and I could see he was nervous. He was worried, but at the same time a little excited. Mm, what's wrong? You okay? Mm, yeah, first, can you show me what you put together? I want to know what the public knows about it. I saw the name they gave it. Oh, yeah. Just give me a second. I'm curious. Ito got at his own Pokecom and started to fiddle with it. He linked to the printer over the network and printed out his files. Wait. You're not upping them to the server after all, are you? Of course not. I don't want to get punched. I told you, you're too scared of her. I skimmed the printout that Ito made for me. After all the cases we'd researched together, he knew how to summarize information into a single page like a pro. Ito read from his own printout. The name was announced last night. The victim was... Oh, Hironori Kakita, a 22-year-old resident of Shibuya. He had a part-time job at Koshin. Koshin? Oh, that was... Us. Oh, no, I, sorry. Koshin? How can you not know about them? They're a huge, successful venture capital firm. They've been making a lot of money lately off of the Shibuya reconstruction. Uh, just like the Shibuya News said, he was made in his he was a male in his twenties. Nice, so you checked there? That was about the only thing I could do, Ito said as he nodded. Wait. She said she was in his twenties the night it happened. And at that point, the only official announcement was that a man's body had been found. Jeez, where did she find this stuff? I couldn't agree more. How did Kay do her research? In the case that the cause of death was strangulation due to a hanging. They decided it was a suicide after a romantic quarrel. Huh. A suicide over a fight with a lover? And that's a strange way to kill yourself by stringing up yourself so that you spun around on a bed until your head popped off. I'm just saying. It, it was ruled to be suicide? Mm, yeah, that's what the cops said. The only other information they came out with was that he was pretty good at his job. He made a surprising amount off of a commission sales job. So who'd he get in a fight with? Huh? I mean, if he had a fight with his girlfriend, that means he had a girlfriend, right? Oh, I see. You don't look through a bunch of files on his Pokecom. No, I don't have anything on that. What about witnesses? The hotel staff were the ones that found him, but nothing else was said. Of course, there was nothing about you two, either. What was going on? So they hadn't said anything about the other girl at the scene? Taku... Sarika was staring at me confused. 
She was probably thinking the same thing. I could understand why there wasn't any information about us. The police had said there wouldn't be, and to be honest, we were just gawkers. There was no real point in telling anyone we were there. But that girl clearly seemed to be involved in the case. If they said he got into a fight with his girlfriend, then it didn't make sense not to report the girl who was there. Was it because she was a minor? I wasn't sure, but she had looked young. She definitely wasn't older than 19. No, even then they'd say something. Whenever there was a problem with someone dating underage girls, they never reported the girl's name, but they always reported her existence. What's wrong? I'll explain. We're going back to the board. And... We're going to wrap this part up here because we're at time. Um, and we don't have time to go through this whole scenario because it's going to take a while probably to go through this and whatever. So we will start here in the next part and we will read the synopsis. I do wish we could kind of scroll around the board. You know what I mean? So we could see and read the synopsis of everything else because I didn't read the leaky noise one. And I kind of want to read the ones of the other ones. You know what I mean? But anyway... Uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.